have similar rules to the flag when it comes to daytime raising, but one thing that Finland does by itself or is unique to the country is that during Midsummer's Eve, the Hi guys and welcome back to my channel if you are seeing my face for the first time you are welcome to my channel in today's video guys we are going to be reacting to this beautiful video titled the difference between finland and sweden yes that is the title of today's video the difference between finland and sweden without further talking let's go over to their youtube channel because we have a lot to learn when i see videos like 15 things you don't know about finland 20 things you don't know about this why this why finland why you can't do this why you can't do that i love those kind of video because it's very very educative so this one when i saw it i was like no i have to watch the video because it's so insightful and educative so without further talking let's go and check it out that are right beside each other and although they literally are right next door that doesn't mean the two are the exact same and there are many different aspects character traits and cultural differences that make the countries of sweden and finland different and with that today here on ftd facts we're gonna find out what those differences are and explore some similarities to my regular followers welcome back to another episode of ftd facts and for all you new people out there my name is dave wapa and welcome to a channel where i look at people cultures and places from all around the world now today as you can see from the title i'm talking about the differences between sweden and finland and you may ask yourself well why is a guy that's canadian doing the differences between these two particular nations well first of all i have just done a lot of videos on sweden as a matter of fact i've done five on the country itself and as for finland i've done pretty much about the same exploring the military and different cultural aspects of the country so i figured with that knowledge let's figure out what's different about them and also with that in mind, I also did a video just recently on the differences between Poland and Sweden. A lot of people really like that video, so I'm continuing to do this yet again. So in Sweden, the population as of a 2018 census is 10,207,086 people, making this country rank 90th in the world in terms of population. Finland, however, has a population as of a 2018 estimate of 5,520,535 people, which makes this country rank 114th in the world. And for population, let's talk about the people within this country. Now, if you look at Finland, well, people in Finland or from Finland are called Finns and the people from Sweden are just simply called Swedes. Now there is one thing that is very similar between these two nations and that is language. Because for both of them they actually have each other's languages listed as official languages of each other's countries. For example in Finland the national languages are Finnish and Swedish and as well you also have Sami. Sweden also has those three particular languages listed as official languages, but on top of that, there's also Yiddish, Romani, and of course, Mianki Li. Which, by the way, sorry, but Norwegian's not in those languages as an official one, so uh, maybe that's the reason why Norway did not want to join the European Union. Maybe? I don't know. So one thing that I also find very similar between these two countries is the style of flag. Now, that's not going into the history or the colors of the flag because those are completely different. And of course, let's not forget the fact that both of these flags were adopted at a very separate time. For example, Sweden's flag was adopted on June 22nd, 1906. Now, the colors came from the coat of arms of the country and the style, very similar to Finland, comes from the Danish flag. Sweden also has 17 listed days that are classified as national flag days, which basically mean that the flag must be up on those days. As well, the flag should theoretically be up during the day and always lowered no later than 9 p.m. However, for both of these countries, one similarity is that if it's wartime, the flag is always up even at night. Finland, however, its flag was adopted on May 29th, 1918. And as stated earlier, Finland uses the very similar Danish flag design, but they actually have 19 days that are classified as a flag national day. Interesting enough, in Finland, the flag doesn't need to be raised on Christmas Day like it does in Sweden. They also do have similar rules to the flag when it comes to daytime raising, but one thing that Finland does by itself or is unique to the country is that during Midsummer's Eve, the flag is flown from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And of course, you may wonder why is that? Well, it's to symbolize that darkness will not hit the country on that day. Also, it's the same day as National Flag Day. And also, considering we're talking about holidays, I should also mention the fact that Finland has one unique holiday that the Swedes would like, and that is Finnish-Swedish Heritage Day. 
This holiday is celebrated on November 6th and it was created originally in 1908. The tradition is to celebrate the Swedish people that are located in the country and to acknowledge the bond and historical bond between these two countries. Speaking of history, let's also talk about the roots of the names of these two countries because they come from separate places. For example, the name Finland is commonly believed to have come from rune stones, actually written on three rune stones, but interesting enough, these particular stones were found in Sweden. Sweden, and two of them which were found in the upland region, the third one was found in the island of Gotland, and all of them had the word Finlandi written on it. So I thought it was very interesting that the name Finland came from something that was written in Sweden. Didn't think that. However, keep in mind many of these rune stones that were created by the Norse people were actually found in a majority of the Scandinavian countries, but most of them were commonly found in the country of Sweden. Also a little bit of a side note, nothing really to do with the differences between these two nations, but when it comes to these rune stones, I found it fascinating that the ones that were found in Upland, which are a majority of the rune stones, about 70% of them have Christian inscriptions written on it. Whereas I always thought most of them would have like Norse or some form of like Viking inscriptions but yeah Christianity is on them did you know that but getting back to Sweden and the reason for its name of course it didn't get it from Finland however the name did derive from external tongues of other countries the term Sweden was actually used by the Dutch when Sweden was becoming a bigger power in the 17th century but however before all that the people from England referred to this land as Swedland now here's some things that the two countries are known for that are actually quite different from each other. And first of all, let's talk about the big one in Finland. They are known for saunas. For most historians and sauna enthusiasts, it's widely believed that the sauna originated from Finland. And still today, it is an extremely popular thing. If you go to Finland and you don't go in a sauna, you're pretty much crazy. That's like going to Germany and not having uh, schnitzel. I don't know what happened to my brain there. But as for saunas, getting an actual date of when these were created is a hard thing, as some historians calculate that it's over 2,000 years old, but many also believe that it might have been as far back as 7,000 BC. However, the earliest known descriptions of the saunas in Finland was in around 1,112 AD. However, on the flip side, Sweden is also known for something that is actually very recent and is also winter-themed. And that is, of course, the famous Ice Hotel. And although there are many other ice hotels around the world, Sweden was known to create the first one. Located in the Jukisjärvi region, it has been built every single year between the months of December and April since 1990. And it's really fascinating, although I've never been there, it's crazy because everything is made out of ice, from your chair to your bed to even the glasses you drink out of. It's so cool. Speaking about the Jukisjärvi region, let's also talk about land. Now, Finland has a land size of 338,424 kilometers square, which makes that country rank 64th in terms terms of land size. Sweden, however, is much bigger with 450,295 square kilometers, ranking 55th in the world. Now, I've been talking a lot about the differences, but let's talk about one major similarity, and that is healthcare. And I like talking about this because I'm Canadian, so, you know, public healthcare is right what I'm down for. Because both are classified as a publicly government funded healthcare and work on a three tier system in national, regional, and local districts. And of course, in both countries, they do have private healthcare. However, the funding of these two countries is quite different. For example, in 2015, Sweden had spent the highest amount of GDP on healthcare compared to any other European nation, and that came at 11.9%. However, to get an equal figure, in the year of 2013, according to the OECD, Finland spent approximately 8.9% of their GDP on healthcare, whereas Sweden was the third highest with 11%. And you know what, while we're at it, let's just take a look at the differences in some of the things that you might buy in the country. For example, if we take 12 eggs in Finland, it is roughly 2.46 euros, where in Sweden, it's 3.37 euros. However, if you were to buy a pound of chicken, that would be quite the opposite, in fact. Because in Finland, for this amount of chicken, you would spend 550 euros, where in Sweden, it's only about 526. So also, one thing that I really like looking at is the historical aspect of these two countries and it's really quite hard to say which country has had a darker or lighter history because they've both been very different. 
For example, in World War II, Finland was actually contributing to two wars. There was the Winter War and the Continuation War, in which the Winter War was between the Russians from 1939 to 1940, and the Continuation War was between Finland and Nazi Germany from 1941 to 1944. Sweden, however, was doing its own thing during the Second World War. It did remain fairly neutral, especially during the First World War, and unfortunately, during the Second World War, Germany had cut off major trade routes to Sweden to other countries around the world, so there Therefore, Sweden was pretty much left by itself. However, one thing to mention is that Sweden was more or less a major refugee place for the Danish Jews, and of course, it shipped materials to Finland to support the wars that they were going through. I also want to mention that one thing I find that is kind of different between these two nations, I mean, I find Finland has had a harder time struggling to get independence. After all, it's a country that pretty much announced its independence from Russia in 1917. And even before that, it has just had a struggle for independence because not only was it a part of the Swedish kingdom, but as well, it was a part of the Swedish empire. Of course, Finland was a part of the Kalmar Union from 1397 to about 1523. And of course, it was part of the Swedish empire from at least the 17th century to 1809. After that, Finland was also thrown into the Russian Empire, in which it was known as the Grand Duchy of Finland, and it was under Russian rule from 1809 till about 1917, when it finally got its own independence. However, that is based simply only off of independence, because when I talk about the conflicts, it gets a little tricky. Because, of course, Sweden has also been through a lot more. It's been through a lot of wars, as a matter of fact. However, I also want to mention that Finland, being a part of Sweden, was also probably thrown into those conflicts as well. But either way, guys, that is just a topic for another time, which reminds me, if you guys really like this video and you want more, or you want a part two to this, be sure to hit that like button, because if I get over 5,000 likes, that is what I will do. On top of that, if you think I missed any cool differences between these two particular nations feel free to write it down there in the comment section below because i always love to read about them and yeah maybe i'll throw them in the second part if we get to it of course if you're new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you can keep into tune to what we're doing but other than that my name is dave wobble and i will see you guys in the next one okay bye wow guys there's a whole lot of difference between sweden and finland this is an eye-opener this is an art of hand. The two countries are beautiful. They are beautiful. The two countries are doing absolutely okay. They are doing absolutely well. Yeah, I enjoy this kind of video. I enjoy it because you, you know, you'll be enlightened on things you had no idea on. Things you didn't even, we had no clue on. That's why I love this kind of video. And this one so educative. Like, I could... Right now, I could mention a few different between Finland and Sweden, all because of this video, all because of the help of this video. Yeah, guys, that is the importance of this educative video. That is why I bring them to this channel, so that you watch and we all will be enlightened. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope today's video was interesting. I hope you, uh, you learned one or two in this video. Please do well to subscribe to my channel, like my videos and share my videos. Thank you and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Bye.